Good morning, Harmony and Consolidated. This is Mr. Calvert again. Um, I'm here to talk to you today about our newest artist of the day, and his name is Edward Hopper. And he is an artist that you will probably recognize at least one of his paintings, um, and an artist that your parents have probably heard of too. He's pretty famous. No, Edward, Edward Hopper, he isn't alive anymore. He passed away in 1967 at the age of 84, so he lived to be a pretty old man. And he is originally from New York City, and that is right about here on the map. We would be right about here in southern Wisconsin. And he is a kind of artist that we haven't talked about before. He is called a realist. And these were artists who tried to, do, who tried to paint just everyday normal life. Um, so they didn't have these really extravagant fancy paintings um, that showed some really like crazy things. You're not going to see like a unicorn in any, in any of their paintings or anything like that. Um, they painted just normal everyday things that you would see just walking down the street. Um, and Edward Hopper, he really liked to focus on seascapes, so pictures of the sea. And he really liked to focus on American life because he was from America. So a lot of times in his paintings, we see um, people just kind of doing their everyday things like um, going grocery shopping or going to the gas station or things like that. Um, he was very fortunate that his parents really supported his love for art um, growing up. That's not always the case. Sometimes um, people are kind of pushed towards other careers, but his parents supported his love for art. And originally he dreamt of being a naval architect. And a naval architect is um, an architect who pretty much designs what ships are going to be like. Um, but instead he went into commercial art instead, and then eventually really took up painting and printmaking. So he always said that he enjoyed painting sunlight on the sides of houses, that that was like his favorite thing to do. So a lot of times in his paintings, we see um, buildings and a lot of times too, he'll do like a house kind of out in the country. And then that's like the only thing in the picture. And he really enjoys um, how he really enjoys like painting the sunlight. You can see this really bright highlight as well as painting like the shadow. So using those different values to make that um, building look 3D. And a lot of times, too, we talk about his paintings seem like they're just capturing a moment in time, kind of these unimportant things that happen all the time that many of us do every single day, but we never really stop to think about. Um, like I had mentioned before, it could be filling up your gas or filling up your car with gas. It could be paying a cashier. It could be um, going to a movie theater. So he liked to capture these little moments in time and then paint those. And oftentimes, too, you'll notice that his paintings are very lonely, that um, the paintings with people, oftentimes, um, either they're the only ones in the painting or they are um, not interacting with each other. They're not talking to each other. They're not looking at each other. And his paintings, too, are very narrative, which means that oftentimes you can almost make a story when you look at some of his paintings, that you start to formulate these things in your head. Um, so here we see one of his house paintings. I told you he'd like to paint um, the sunlight on the sides of the house. Uh, on the sides of houses, kind of a spooky looking building. Um, I believe that he liked to kind of travel up the eastern side of the United States and paint um, places along the ocean. Here we see a lighthouse. He did a lot of light lighthouse paintings. I think this is the one I've actually seen. I have seen one of his lighthouse um, lighthouses in person, not the painting, but the actual lighthouse that he painted I got to see when I was out in Maine a couple years ago. Um, here's one of those lonely paintings that I was talking about. We see this um, young lady right here. She's sitting by herself. She kind of has a sad expression on her face. You can tell that she's looking down, um, maybe at her cup or ahead of her cup. Um, there's this empty chair, so it makes you wonder whether she's planning to meet somebody there and they didn't show up or whether she's waiting. So you mentioned how these oftentimes are narrative. They tell stories, um, whether we know what that story is or not, but we can kind of formulate our own stories. Um, here's another one. You can tell by the light that it's probably either early morning or um, it's late afternoon by the way the light is shining through and casting shadows. Um, this man looks like he's probably working or reading the newspaper. He's by himself. Um, here's another one. This one we actually see that there's more than one person. This is obviously the focal point. This is the one that Edward Hopper is trying to draw your attention to, but there are some people over here. And we talk about even though there's more than one person in this painting. It still has a very lonely feeling. You can see she's looking down, kind of the way she's holding her arms and her posture. She looks bored or like she's thinking of something else. But his most famous painting is called Nighthawks. And you probably recognize this from my classroom I have it hanging up. Um, we see four people at a diner. 
and um, this couple right here, you can tell they're not interacting with each other. The lady looks kind of bored, like she's looking at her nails. Um, nobody's looking or talking any, to each other. So it still has this very lonely um, feeling to it. And this one's actually in Chicago. So if you ever go down there, you can check it out at the art museum. And this is also a painting that people parody or they make joke versions of a lot. Um, so here we see a Star Wars version of it. Um, somebody recreated it um, out of Legos. Here we see one where they changed it so that it's closed now. They see the closed sign, the lights are off, and the person's walking away. Sesame Street version. Um, this is actually Banksy. If you watch our Artist of the Day video on him um, yesterday, uh, he actually created this version of it where this man threw the chair at the window and cracked it, and then a Batman version of it too. And part of the reason I thought you guys would find Edward Hopper interesting is kind of because of that um, isolated, lonely feeling and how some of you guys might actually be feeling that way now. Um, with the quarantine going on, I thought maybe some of us could relate to some of these. Now, typically, if we were in school, we would um, do a seascape project based on him and kind of talk about value and how to change values in the ocean to make um, things look close and far away. Um, but I mentioned that he likes to do a lot of like seascapes, um, things along the ocean, um, that includes boats and sailors as well. This one does a really good job showing space and value. Notice how that ocean changes. It goes from tint, a little bit darker tint, a little bit darker until you get um, to those shades kind of in the back and how that creates that change of value creates a really nice change of space as well. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed Edward Hopper. You kind of know about him a little bit now. Um, probably have always wondered about that painting hanging up in my classroom. It's one of my favorites. I uh, hope you guys have a good day. Uh, take care.